All right, guys, we're back for another lesson. This is lesson 1-4, and it's all about sketching graphs and comparing functions. So let's jump right in. Looking at the standards, we're doing FIF4, FIF9. Um, you probably don't really care too much about that, but if you want to take a second to read it, you're more than welcome to. So our vocabulary, we don't really have any key vocabulary terms specifically for this lesson. So we're just going to jump in and continue talking about vocabulary words that we've already been looking at. Domain, range, intercept, symmetry, end behaviors, extrema, increasing, decreasing. These are the key concepts um, of this lesson that you should have we've been building up to this point in our previous lessons we've been talking about these things and now we're going to kind of try to tie it all together as we sketch graphs of functions so we can use the key feature key features of a function those extremas that minimum maximum value the end behaviors all of those different things the domain the range um, those help us get an idea of what our graphs going to look like and then allow us to sketch it so looking at example one in your workbook on page 31, it says use key features of the function to sketch its graph. So we've got a y-intercept of 0, negative 70. Well, what does the y-intercept mean? The y-intercept, if it didn't give us the coordinates, if it just said we had a y-intercept of negative 70, well, we know that's where my line is going to cross my y-axis. So we come over here at negative 70 and we could put a point. It tells me that it is a linear function. So what does linear mean? Well, it means that it's a straight line. I've been sitting still for too long. My lights went off. Hold on a sec. Um, for positive values, it tells me that um, for values of x, such that x is less than negative 30, that the values are positive, and it tells me that it's decreasing for all values of x. Hmm, interesting. My function is decreasing for all values of x. All right, and then it tells me in behavior. As x is going towards positive infinity, the end is going down. And as x is going towards negative infinity, my function is going up. So we can move through the slides to sketch the graph of the key features. Let's do that. Let's move me out of the way. So we put in that y-intercept. We know that it's linear, so it should be a straight line. And it says it's positive for values of x such that x is less than negative 30. So that tells me that at negative 30, the values start going up. They have positive values. So that means that negative 30 and below must be negative. So the corresponding y values is what we're talking about. When x is negative 30 and anything less than x is negative 30, so x being negative 40, x being negative 60, x being negative 80, have corresponding values that are positive. Look at these corresponding y values. They're all positive. And then it tells me that it's decreasing for all values of x. So that tells me my line is going down as I move left to right. And then last of all, the end behaviors. As x is going up, my y's are going down. And as x is going down, my y's are going up. So we have a visual of what our graph should look like. Kind of a neat thing that we can come up with a graph just by, we don't have necessarily exact points other than 0, negative 70, but then we can come up with all this other information since they've given us this information, we can use that to come up with this line and sketch it on our graph. Okay, example two is to sketch a nonlinear function. So immediately I know if it's nonlinear, it's not a line. Hence the word non-line is right in there, not a line. So it says the y-intercept 0, 3. Pretty easy thing to sketch out. So let's put our y-intercept on there. Tells me it's nonlinear, so we know it's going to have some curve to it. It tells me it's continuous, so it's not just a bunch of random points. It's connected, it's continuous, and it's positive for all values of x. Hmm. Positive for all values of x. So even when x is negative, my graph's still going to be up here somewhere. It, when x is positive, my graph is still going to be up here because my y values are always positive. 
it tells me that it's decreasing for values of x such that x is less than 0. So if x is less than 0, my function is decreasing. So it looks like maybe this end is going to be going down. Let's check out the end behaviors. As x goes to positive infinity, f of x is going up. As x goes to negative infinity, hmm, this is also going up, which makes sense since it says it's positive for all values of x. Let's look at it. Decreasing for all values of x such that x is less than 0. It's a decreasing function, so it's going down. But it's an increasing function or a positive function for all values of x. So the corresponding y's are always positive, but my function is decreasing on the side. See how this line is going down? That's what that means. It's decreasing for values of x less than 0. Here's my x at 0. So all of these x's, my function is decreasing. Um, okay, so looking at this graph, it meets all the other criteria. It meets the end behavior as f of x, as x goes to positive infinity, and as x goes both to positive and negative, the end should be both going up towards positive infinity. And it looks like we have a relative minimum here at 0, 3 because the function is decreasing for values of x such that x is less than 0, and it has a relative minimum at 0, 3, because 0, 3 is a relative minimum, and the function is decreasing to that point, it appears to be increasing for values of x greater than 0. So I hope that made sense. And then last of all, of course, looking at our end behavior, which we already talked about. So, fun part, sketching real-world functions. I think it's fun. Test drive. I know a lot of you see words, math, I don't want to read. I read in English class or whatever, but we got to read a math too. Test drive. Hay is driving a car that she's thinking about buying. She decides to accelerate to 60 miles per hour and then decelerate to a stop to test the acceleration and the brakes. It takes her 15 seconds of uniform acceleration. So uniform means it's a constant increase constant rate of change to reach her maximum speed and 15 seconds of a uniform deceleration to come to a stop. Use the key features to sketch a graph that shows the speed as a function of time. So let's look at our key features here. Tells us the y-intercept, we know that, because you can't start at a negative time or start at a negative speed. So we're going to start at 0, 0. So that's pretty easy to know that our starting place is there. Linear or nonlinear? Well, again, I think this is pretty simple to see. It's going to be nonlinear because she's accelerating and then decelerating. So it's not going to continue continuously go up. Um, extrema. Her extrema is going to be her maximum speed of 60 miles per hour. And it says that she reached that after 15 seconds. So we know going over 15 seconds, we're going to be up here at 60, and that's going to be the extrema. We know that she's increasing for the first 15 seconds and then decreasing for the second set second 15 seconds. And the end behavior, because it starts at zero and is going to end at zero, there's no need for an end behavior. It's not going to go below zero. So we can't say that the end's approaching negative infinity forever or approaching positive infinity because the car comes to a stop. So that gives us a rough idea of what the graph should look like. And we know, I, I didn't draw it out, but it will be a V, a V-shaped graph, because it's going up at a constant rate, and then it's going down at a constant rate. So it's going to create a perfect little um, mountain, upside-down V. All right, example four. Functions can be represented with a graph, table, or by a verbal description. You can compare the properties and key features features of functions represented in these different ways. So we're going to tap on each button to see how to use the table and the graph to compare the two functions. Let's look at the x-intercept. The table has an x-intercept of 3, 
whereas our graph has an x-intercept of negative 2. It's where my line would cross the x-axis, so it's where the y-coordinate is 0. What is my y-intercept? Well, it's where my line crosses the y-axis, so the x-coordinate is going to be 0. And we can tell that it's increasing. Both functions are increasing. This one's going up by 1 each time as this goes up by 3. And this is going up one, up 2 over 1. As we are increasing, it goes up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. And our last thing to look at is example 5, comparing the properties of nonlinear functions. So once again, we can compare the x-intercepts, the y-intercepts. And on nonlinear functions, we can have more than one x or y-intercept because it's a curved function. It's snaky. It's slithering along. So it's got, this one has three x-intercepts and one y-intercept. We have, um, let's see here, what am I looking for? A relative maximum here. We have a relative minimum here. And then we can also look at our end behaviors. It's going down forever in one direction. So as my x's are going down, my y's are going down. So as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches, or g of x, the entire function approaches negative infinity. As g of x, as my x's are going to the right, so as x goes to positive infinity, g of x is also going to positive infinity. So I just kind of went through all that without going through it, but that's okay. That sums up today's lesson. If you want to work on the lesson check, I highly recommend it, and then checking your answers. Have a great day, guys.